now that we're towards the end of Basecamp, I thought it'd be good to start by reflecting a little bit. And in the past few years, you know, SWE and Mission Labs have gone from a small stealth, you know, seed stage company to now being one of the largest and most important Web3 businesses in the world. Um, and so as that incredible growth has happened, I'm sure many things have changed. And so I'd be curious to just start by reflecting back a little bit on what's changed for both SWE as a blockchain and SWE as an ecosystem, uh, you know, since you guys have first started. Yeah, I mean, again, everybody, thank you for coming to Basecamp. It's been phenomenal to see the amount of energy in this ecosystem. It's, it's insane. Um, we started this company with a vision of changing how the internet is built, right? Um, we, we came from Google, Facebook, you name it. We have people in our company who build search, who build big data platforms, who build Instagram. So we know what big tech does and the impact big tech does, um, has. Um, so we took that energy and that thought, um, that leadership that we had in some of the large companies in the world, and we put that expertise to work in solving the fundamental problems of the internet. Um, that passion is still there today. And I think one thing that I've, I've seen changed is our effectiveness in execution. I think um, in, uh, we're very, I mean, it took us a while to get SWE out. It's probably one of the most complicated projects we've ever all worked out in our, in our lives. Um, but since we've launched SWE, the vision's becoming even more clearer and the need for the technology that we're building becomes even more apparent. And I think you start to see even more razor-focused delivery. I think in, in the space of two years, as mentioned, we've launched three unicorns at the company. I don't know many companies that launch three unicorns, period, right? Um, but it's all talking about execution, like even to the point of this event. I think, um, please give a round of applause to the events team. It's been phenomenal. <laughs> execution all around. Um, we, we just put a passion to what we do. I think that we, we believe in what we're doing and we do things really, really well. And I'm really, really pleased. We've been very lucky to hire some of the best minds in the space and very, very pleased. It's awesome. Um, what do you feel like have been the biggest things that you guys have learned, right? I think any time you start a startup, um, there are things you believe in the beginning that you get right. There are other things that, that have to be changed. You get new information and, and adjust kind of based on that information. What have been the biggest lessons that you guys have picked up from these first few years? Yeah, um, that listen to your intuitions, right? Um, we started off with SWE, we had so much advice from so-called OGs in crypto about how to go around the SWE launch um, to the point where, um, I mean, we, we parted ways with our Series A. I mean, we said no to a number of VCs because look, the way we want to run our company is we want to run a company, right? We, we love your ideas, but look, we have our own ideas how we want to build a business. Um, our intuition told us um, to go to market with long-term view of acquiring developers who are passionate about the technology and who are long-term in mindset and building. Majority of those developers are still here today and building some of those prominent, fastest growing businesses in Web3. That intuition led us into building community very, very differently. Um, I think I would say if there's anything we've learned is that we go with our intuition, but it doesn't mean that we're hard assed, right? Like when things go wrong, we will pivot and we've pivoted a number of times. I think early on, we didn't have enough of a focus on DeFi, which is a severe mistake that we pivoted on and, and really changed very quickly. And our DeFi ecosystem is number six in terms of trading volume. And I think number eight in terms of TVL. And we're only, we're less than two years old and there's a lot of growth opportunities there. Um, so we will make our, we will change our minds when we see we've made a mistake. But I think you, all, you, you should always have an opinion on what you're solving and try not to derive it from others' opinions to a large degree. Mm -hmm. um, one way that you guys frame SWE sometimes is you're not just as another blockchain, but as this kind of global coordination layer. Yeah. And I was wondering if you could just unpack that for us a little bit in terms of what you mean and, and how that's distinct from you know, just having you know, another blockchain. Yeah. I mean, the, for us, as I was saying multiple, multiple times, right, we knew... The reason why big companies like Facebook, Google, right, build these large conglomerates, right, it's you start to end up owning user data. You start to end up building your own kingdom because technology forces you. Basically, the, the, the tech stack is forcing you to do things in a very closed loop. Technology is not built in a way where you give control of access to data to users. It's as, it, you become the custodian of data. You become judge, jury, executioner. We felt that business models ultimately were going to see a transformation. And to solve that transformation issue, you needed the online technology to make it happen. Google was not building it. Instagram, we're not building that. Facebook, we're not building that. Amazon's not solving that problem today. Um, so we found a new space for ourselves. And we feel we're the only company in the world that's trying to solve the, fund uh, the foundational issue of a centralized internet. Um, and to do that, it requires a lot of tenacity. We need to be very focused on what we're trying to do. 
um, the coordination layer story for us is the idea that if we can coordinate or allow developers to coordinate what people do online in a very atomic way, in a very safe way, you can build a trillion dollar business out of that. So we, we're going to be the NVIDIA of the space. That's what we want to do. We want to rebuild the underpinnings of what you do online by using our tech stack. And if you imagine, so we've got SWE as this coordination layer. Now we're coordinating storage with Walrus. We're coordinating secret sharing with Seal. Um, we're coordinating off-chain interactions with uh, different chains with Ica, right? We're coordinating a number of even on-chain and off-chain verification of data using, uh, or off-chain and on-chain co computation of data using um, Nautilus that's coming soon. So you're starting to see the pieces. So if you go to AWS, you, you log onto a website and you, you have a set of tools, you have a number of services you can use together cohesively. We're building that for the decentralized stack. So you'd be able to have a dashboard, you'd be able to see all the services are available to you and use a set of APIs to start building uh, interesting apps. Um, we'll be able to talk about some of these apps to, um, today. I'm very excited about what we're making possible using this um, new stack. It's just not something anyone's doing, and that's what I lo love about it. People are distracted doing other things, and I, it's, it's great to have such a blank canvas. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that's unique about building a global coordination layer, and one thing that's unique about Web3 is um, you're global from day one. Yeah. And so you have to think on a much bigger scale much earlier than if you're just you know, selling to customers down the street. Correct. And so when you guys think about what it means to build a global community uh, and a global platform, what is some of the work that you're doing to appeal to you know, the, the user in the Philippines and the engineer in Romania and, um, and, and people really all over the world that are you know, potential users or, or engineers on top of the platform? Yeah, I mean, quite frankly, our obsession is developers, right? Um, I'm not going to do the Steve Bomber developers, developers, developers thing, right? But our obsession from day one has been developers. Actually, we didn't focus much on retail or consumers at the onset, but we knew that there were retail and consumer problems that needed to be uh, addressed. One of the things we built was ZK login and sponsored transactions because we felt if developers are going to build amazing products, they need to have unencumbered ways of onboarding users into the ecosystem. So obsessing about what developers can build, making sure it's as frictionless as possible, means developers can build applications that bring people in. Uh, uh, people will say crypto has a problem, right? We need to onboard more users into crypto. I'm like, well, no, crypto has an app problem. We need apps that can onboard users um, to solve real um, world problems. Our goal is that SWE becomes not a commodity, but a utility, right? It becomes something you use daily. You wake up in the morning, you're using an app, and in the background, SWE is powering it. You don't wake up in the morning thinking, I'm using an amazing AWS website, right? Just using an app, right? And we believe what users do on a day-to-day -day basis is going to be coordinated by SWE. The data you store online will be owned by you using Walrus. The secrets you share, the access controls you have will be done using SEAL. And a number of these things are going to really fundamentally change the way people have relationships with brands and their data, as you heard with other partners earlier today. Good. Um, I've been spending a lot of time in San Francisco lately, and I think if you go there and you walk into any WeWork, everybody's building something in AI. Yeah. Or if you go into a coffee shop, everybody's using some AI product, whether that's OpenAI or Cursor or something else. Um, and so you have this one exponential technology that's AI, you have another exponential technology that's crypto, and I think those, as they both continue to grow, are going to spill over into each other. And so when you guys think about SWE and the opportunities that SWE or Walrus or these other projects have to address opportunities in AI, yeah. what are some of the things you guys are thinking about or focusing on? Yeah, as you know, AI deals with an issue of uh, uh, creates abundance, right? And crypto deals with scarcity two amazing dichotomies that work really, really well together, right? For us, the opportunity is really, really clear. Um, we believe the mass majority of developers are going to be AI developers. What we mean by that is not everyone's going to be writing software for AI, but everybody's going to be using some form of tools, LLM-related tools, to build or be more effective in doing their jobs. One of the things we're releasing is Bogdar. Bogdar is an um, AI tool that reduces the friction of finding bugs in your code. Every commit you submit, it will find potential vulnerabilities. It actually is going to be available for EVM, Solana, SWE, you name it, all the ecosystems, because more smart contract hacks is a holdback for all crypto, not just for SWE as a whole. Um, separately from that, um, we're going to be investing a lot of time and effort and resources into building tools that accompany um, developers that are working in LM space to solve particular problems. Um, we think we have a unique stack 
that can be married with AI. Um, the fact that you now have, you know, what Ika was talking about, right? The ability to build guardrails around what a, your AI agent can do for you. It can spend money at Starbucks, but it can't spend money to buy cards, for example. That stuff freaking matters, right? The saying you can spend $50 versus $500,000, right? Being able to put guardrails around what you can do or what your AI agent can do. Crypto is gonna be a great way of doing that, but also doing that within the confines of Move without the bugs that you get with other platforms. So we think there's a big opportunity to do that as well. Mm -hmm. So people have been trying to build decentralized storage solutions for a number of years in crypto. There was Filecoin, there was Arweave, there were all these experiments. Um, and for whatever reason, I think none of them really quite broke out. And so when you think about Walrus and Walrus's opportunity, what do you feel like are the things that maybe the earlier solutions weren't able to do that, that Walrus is able to improve on? Um, and, and what do you think that means for what Walrus looks like you know, two to three years from now? Yeah, really good question. I mean, the first thing is, if I said to you, um, hey, I come to you and I say, I need to store, um, well, actually, you come to me. You say you want to store 100 gigabytes worth of data. I'm like, look, you have to pay me 100 years in advance. Otherwise, I'm not storing your data. Does that make any sense? Okay, so the fundamental business problem, right? Uh, business model problem. This is an issue with Arweave, right? Separately, you've got other um, systems that will not give you strong guarantees around your data, um, nor give you element of like even the fact that your data has been preserved or will be very, very slow to give you a download or reads. So it's fundamentally um, a broken model when it's expensive to store, um, difficult to retrieve, um, it doesn't tie in with the idea of, of, of like um, an actual open market, right? For us, we, what we built with Walrus is imagine you, it, it, you basically have a service as good as AWS from a, from a pricing perspective and from a, um, a, even more robust in terms of um, the failure modes that it gives you. So your data is split into millions of fragments, um, split into hundreds if not thousands of machines. Even if you have uh, two thirds of the machines down, you can still get your data. That will not exist to you in AWS or Google. In fact, we had a scenario where Google accidentally deleted uh, um, public company's data. There was no, that company was held back for quite a while as a result of that issue. Now with Walrus, you have a mechanism whereby you have, you can store your data, you can encrypt it using seal. You can have very cheap mechanisms um, for proving the data is actually there as it's stored. And also ensure there's an economic model that ensures that you pay very, very low fees for a long period of time. So I, I think the element of one, it needs to be competitive to a large degree to centralized storage um, options. It doesn't have to be absolutely cheaper because I think it's adding additional utility. But also from a developer standpoint, it needs to make sense. Developers need to be able to find out how to build on it very, very quickly. Um, for example, there are a few AWS um, S3 SDKs are coming out for Warris. So if you're building an S3, just use the same SDK they are using for S3. You can start using Warris very, very quickly. These kind of mechanisms do make a big, big difference in uh, adoption. And I think some of the areas we're finding a lot of um, interest is, you know, even with public government data, right? Um, we, we saw this, amaz this amazing hack with Bybit recently where a billion dollars was lost. If you had married Sui and Walrus and used that as a layer for storing the backend systems, the backend data, we have a mechanism called binary transparency that ensures that you don't execute data, um, code against code that you don't understand. And that would have prevented that billion dollar hack. So there's a cybersecurity element that Walrus actually addresses that centralized services you just cannot. And for me, that's a multi-trillion dollar opportunity as well. Like, these are foundational problems that are not being targeted by existing systems. I say, today you have to hire FireEye or, or um, uh, you know, pay a number of whack-a-mole services to try and solve the problem, rather than dealing with the heart of the um, access control issue. Mm -hmm. Now, turning to the future, um, where do you think we're going as an industry over the next you know, two to three years? And how does Sui and Walrus and these other projects that you guys are working on fit into that vision of the future that you have? Yeah, so I, I'm, we always make this statement that um, at Facebook, we had more developers in Facebook than we had in crypto, right? So crypto devs is a very saturated space. And if your business model is primed on trying to win or fight against uh, other ecosystems or devs, you're going to fail very, very easily. Um, at SWE, um, we're finding devs are learning SWE move in three to four days, which is amazing. So the onboarding journey is actually great. I think um, it could be better. We want to improve that significantly. But you compare that with other ecosystems, no need to chew glass. You can build very, very quickly in the SWE ecosystem. But also, we want to grow the pie, right? If you imagine this very small pie of um, Web2 devs, 
I'm sorry, of Web3 devs and a massive pie of Web3 devs all around. This is why if you look at the stack, right, we've got storage, we've got coordination, we've got encryption, we've got um, on and off chain computation, we've got multi-chain access. You, the the um, surface area of problems you can solve go beyond what is addressable in Web3. And we are going to expand the number of devs in SWE significantly um, by going to world's Web2 businesses who can solve the problems using the SWE stack. So what we want to do is significantly grow the uh, amount of use cases that are possible in the stack by going to a broader audience that can take advantage of um, the amazing stack that we've built. Mm. So I think we're at time. Um, so my final question is, when we come back next year to Sweet Base Camp, what will we be talking about? Man, it's, it's crazy. We're, we're shipping stuff all the time, right? I think Seal is a couple of months away. Um, um, Nautilus is a couple of months away. I think the D team would have probably invented some new consensus algorithm, who knows, that can bend space and time. Hopefully, we'll see. But I, I think what I'd love to be talking about um, in a year from now is actually less the technology, but more the success stories, right? What matters is really that um, we can show that businesses can be transformed as a result of decentralized tech. And that matters a lot more, right? That's where the TAM actually is. So I'd love to be talking in a year's time about the businesses that found success by building on this new decentralized stack. That is what crypto is all about, beyond just the money that we're going to make, because we're all going to get rich in crypto. Yay, great. Um, but what we want to do is have lasting impact, long-term lasting impact. That's actually going to be more sustainable. And we'd love to be talking about those kind of use cases in a, in a year's time. Amazing. Well, thank you all for coming. Thank great you. Great face cap. Good.